Thanks so much for having us here today. Oh, absolutely. So tell me a little bit about your background and the launch of Bits of Thread, which is the coolest name ever, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. So I've been sewing all my life. I learned when I was about seven years old, my mom taught me how to sew. It was something that she had done and all of her family had done, and it uh, was one of those summer activities we do a lot together. And it was always something that was a hobby for me. Um, I sewed all my own um, my prom dresses and things like that in high school, and different kinds of outfits that I wanted to have. But, you know, sewing was not very popular at that time, so I didn't tell anybody that I liked to sew. And um, it wasn't really until after college and after I had moved to D.C. that I got more serious about it as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And um, I started teaching kids' classes at the Sitar Center, a community arts center around the corner from where I am. And uh, I just loved it. I loved the energy. I loved the way that, uh, how excited kids were about it. I thought it was a great medium for teaching a lot of different skills, both personal and technical. And uh, so I just started taking on more and more classes, gigs, teaching, and community centers, and work programs, and so on. And um, what I found was that there were a lot of adults also. Initially, I was just teaching kids, but there were a lot of adults who wanted to learn to sew, too. So. Um, a friend and I started a group called DC Threads, which is a program geared towards adults, a free program that happens once a month here in DC. And um, the first time we launched the program, we had about six people come to our first event. Mm -hmm. But within about two months, we were quickly filling up to you know 30 people every time we do this, wow. this program. Um, so we knew there was just a lot of interest in learning how to sew and doing different sewing-related activities uh, here in DC. And so just as a side gig, I started teaching private lessons. Mm -hmm. um, and I started that about a year and a half ago and found that, sure enough, my schedule was full within about two months. And uh, so the first little office that I had was too small for what I was doing. I needed to upgrade to a little bit bigger office than a bigger office. And so now I'm here in this space. And uh, it's just been really great uh, being here. And I'm able to teach both classes and private lessons here. It's so great. I mean, I think it's a really inspiring story, too, of taking your hobby, you know, something that you're really passionate about, even when it wasn't cool, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, making your own problem Because yeah. you're right. Like, it's, you know, back 20-ish, 30 years ago, yeah, like, it wasn't yeah. so much. But now it's so cool yeah, to have. Yeah. And there's so many great sewing books out, and they're all very kind of chicly done, exactly. if that's a word. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, and I know, too, like, the workshop you had last weekend, I mean, there's a lot about repurposing. Mm -hmm. So it's like taking old t-shirts from the thrift store or, um, you know, old dresses from a vintage shop and then, yeah. like, making them your own. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that, how that's kind of evolved, too, with the green movement? Well, I think people, um, you know, our values are shifting. I think we've gotten a little bit of sick of the sort of, you know, typical consumer culture. Um, and you lose a sense of connection, just like we often have a sense of loss in terms of our connection to our food. I think that mm. people have a loss and sense of connection to their clothing. And I think that no matter what, I find time again when students come and learn how to make their own clothes, it's both empowering, but it's also enlightening how much work goes into a piece of clothing. And that's all stuff that we really don't know until we do it ourselves. And I think that people like that, you yeah. know, and especially when you wear something that you've made, there's a great sense of empowerment and pride in that, you know, skirt or whatever it is that you've, you've created for yourself. So I think that um, there's both a connection to the process, but I think it's sort of a just an innate feeling of loss that we, we've had, and people are more interested in really, really getting back to that. Um, but then also, it's enormously, sewing is enormously practical. Like you said, there's a lot of ways to go into your closet, find something that you were getting ready to throw out, and to repurpose into something new and make something last longer, increase its value to yourself. Um, or take things that, you know, were, take a sheet and make it into a dress. You know, yeah. That kind of thing that I think, um, oh, I find a lot of my students find really satisfying. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's funny, even I was home last weekend and we were going through boxes of just random things my mother had kept mm -hmm. of t-shirts that mm -hmm. I just adored mm -hmm. as a little girl and um, came across a dress. It's this little poly bird dress mm -hmm. that apparently she had told me had gotten lost in the wash because I wore all the time to the point <laughs> like it was a little indecent. Yeah, yeah. And literally I was looking and I'm like, how could I fit into this again? But it's probably <laughs> for like a 4T. Yeah, yeah. But you know, for people like that who come across these things that are really sentimental from maybe yeah. their childhood or their child's yeah. you know, yeah. childhood, what are some ideas on you know things to do with them? I mean, the great thing yeah. a t-shirt into a bag 
bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a little different, but I had one of my one of my favorite moments this year. I had a student whose whose father had recently passed away, and um, so she had a lot of his old shirts, and she was going to make them into two baby blankets because one of her, um, I guess, her sisters. Both of her sisters were having boys, mm -hmm. and so and they were going to be born around the same time. So she was going to make two little boy baby blankets. So she um, took her dad's shirts and, and cut them into squares and put together this quilt. And um, when she finally finished sewing the backing onto it and kind of turning it inside out and seeing it, there there wasn't a dry eye in the room. I mean, everybody, as we saw this thing kind of come from something that had belonged to her father and that was very special and intimate. And to become this new thing that's going to be, you know, wrapped around these new young boys who are coming yeah. to the family, it's just a wonderful um, transformation. Yeah, you know, something that, that that had a lot of uh, had a lot of meaning for everybody. Yeah, so. I love I just love yeah. reversing. What a great yeah. story. Yeah. And so, tell me what we're going to do today. So today we're going to um, make just a little drawstring bag. It's a very simple pattern. It's the kind of thing you can do in many different sizes. You can uh, you can make it you know small enough that you can put a pair put a pair of your shoes before you stick in your gym bag or whatever. Mm -hmm. or you can make it large enough for um, a laundry bag. You can make it small enough for jewelry. And it's the kind of thing we're just going to use regular cotton today. But you could use a t-shirt. You could use um, again old you know scraps of things that you have around the house. Um, just about anything can make this this bag. Well, that's a great, and the, the mention of sheets is mm -hmm. a great idea too. Because yeah. sometimes you have these super cute sheets, but they're they're really threadbare, and yes. it's time to let them go. Yeah. But to turn them into like a laundry bag or something yeah. is a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally love the you know the sound of music routine where you take some curtains and make them into dresses. Yeah, yeah. it's one of my favorite things to do. Great. So. Okay, so we're gonna make a little bag this size today. Again, you can make this bag any size that you want. Um, the idea is that you're going to cut two pieces of fabric because you need one for the outside and one for the lining. And you want your fabric to be, let's say this bag is about 7 inches by 7 inches. Uh -huh. So my fabric is 8 inches by 16 inches because it's going to be folded over each piece of the lining on the outside and sewed along the edges like this. So the first thing we need to do is pin the fabric to get ready to sew it. So, Kimberly, <laughs> you're going to take this and fold it so that the right sides are together here. Yeah. Okay. And then I want you to put just about three pins on either side. Okay. Does it matter if the ball's on the inner or outer? Generally, if you're right-handed, you want the balls on the outside okay. so that you can pull them out. If okay. you're left-handed, you can put them the other way. You generally do not want to sew over the pins if you can help it um, because there's a chance that your needle on your sewing machine could hit the pin and that could break your needle, it could knock your machine out of timing, but it also could potentially harm um, you. So. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is take this piece and sew down each side of it. Okay. And the first side I'm going to sew all the way down, I'm going to use a back stitch to lock in my stitches at the top and the bottom. On the second side, I'm not going to backstitch at the top corner because this is the corner where we're going to be putting the drawstring through the bag, ultimately. So, all right. And you can use any seam allowance that you want. I typically use a 5 8 of inch seam allowance because that's what's standard for a lot of homemade sewing patterns. But anything that you want to use is just fine. Those two sides sewed. You can really help me by clipping off my thread there. And now on the corner that I did not backstitch, I'm going to sew a small little box like shape around to keep the seam allowances down. And that's so that when I thread the, um, the ribbon through, the ribbon won't get stuck on these seam allowances here. Mm. So. One pin in right here. I'm also going to pin the other side of the bag out of the way so it doesn't get stuck and sewed down while I'm stitching this. And I'm going to make a little mark for myself where I put that pin so I know where to stop and turn around. This mark is about an inch and a half 
down from the top because I just need a little space here. And the idea is I'm just going to sew right in the middle of the seam allowance. Connect to where that chalk mark is. And I pivot. Come across. Put your needles down and pivot again. And come right back up the other side. You don't need to worry about back stitching this part. By taking, picking out the stitches, okay, right down at the down. bottom. Okay, down. great. Yeah, the trusty seam ripper. <laughs> exactly, it's your best friend. Okay, so now we're gonna sew the lining here, and just like we did on the outside, we're gonna sew all the way down one edge here, and then on the second side, we're gonna go about two thirds of the way down, and we're gonna leave ourselves a little opening right near the bottom. This opening, you'll see in just a minute, is your magic trapdoor. It's your rabbit hole to help you turn everything inside out after you join the lining and the outside together. So first, go all the way down here. You're so speedy with the back stitch. <laughs> From doing it all day. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you do all day, you get you get, get speedy at. Speedy at. So I'm stopping right where that little chalk mark is, so that I've left my hand open. Yeah. Mind trying to no touch problem. The next step is to put the lining inside of the outside. So you want to turn the lining so that it's right side out. And you're going to stuff it into here. There you go. And it doesn't matter which way you put in, the most important thing is just to line up the side seams here. Together. And you're going to pin this and this together all the way around. Okay. With the ball on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the ball on top. Again, so that you can easily take the pin out as you're sewing. You also want to make sure that the little seam allowance flaps are folded together in this situation so that they're folded pointing the same direction. Like this one, if this one is folded this way, I need to make sure that this one is uh, also is folded this way so that when I thread the um, ribbon around that it won't get stuck on those mm -hmm. seam allowances on the inside. So you just want to make sure that the seam allowances are all folded either clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter, but they should be folded down so they don't get stuck on the ribbon. Okay, this is pinned together. Now I'm going to take this part of my sheet off and create what's called a free arm. And I can oh, fit this yeah. right on here like that. It's the same way that you sew. Yeah, it's great. It's the same way that you sew the bottom of uh, pant legs or cuffs around shirts. Oh wow! Makes it very easy. This is one of the best inventions. Yeah, sewing machine. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. great. Yeah. So I'm just sewing around the top, I'm still keeping my five eighths of an inch seam allowance, and I'm sewing all the way around. And I'm gonna backstitch when I return to the place where I started. Do one last little thing. We're going to seal up this hole here so that our bag doesn't have a uh, secret compartment that we don't want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, to seal this up, I'm just going to stitch with the machine really close to the edge here. Okay. And then you can stuff that in. 
hands on. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And we just need to create a casing for that drawstring. So I'm going to make sure that the seam between the lining and the outside is just right at the upper upper edge here. So I'm just kind of rolling it between my thumb and forefinger. And then I'm going to put it back on the machine. And this time I'm going to line it up. Instead of the 5 eighths, I'm going to line it up with the 6 eighths to make my casing a little bit bigger so that I've got plenty of room for my drawstring. And I'm going to sew all the way around. you do that, I'll bring down some ribbon, and we're just about done. Super cute. Great for jewelry when you travel. Mm -hmm. We're going to put that ribbon through, and you can see the end of it all the way through. Put that on here, ah, and then you're just going to insert it in the hole that you left, and just cinch it through. Okay. Look what you have to do if you lose a drawstring in the exactly, wash, exactly. right? Yeah.